So, when I started preparing this talk, I was going to talk about how to hack your dog with genetic engineering. But as I made these slides, if I was going to say, I realized that genetic engineering has been promised for years and years, and we never see it. But there's something that I could talk about that could help explain why science is promising the future without delivering it. So I'm going to talk about something else today. I apologize for those of you who are helping to know how to actually make your dog glow. So today, my primary thesis is that science has failed you. I'm sorry to inform you of this, um, but it's slow, and it keeps promising you jetpacks and hover cars and <laughs> meals and a pill, and you never get one, do you? It's kind of bad, but the reality of it is more accurate the science bureaucrats have failed you. Because the funding realities of science are such that the most promising sciences we have are turning to bureaucrats, chasing grant money, trying to manage laboratories, and not actually getting a chance to get out there and focus creatively, cre focus their creativity on their science. A lot of the reason is for cash and politics that mix in there, for those of you who recognize them. And science is expensive. And the politics around it are such that in order for politicians to justify giving money to scientists, they have to see results. So with science that gets funded is focused largely on results that we can see and feel on our next generation devices. With the LHC, this is a large kind of glider in Geneva, Switzerland. It almost didn't happen because it was deemed too expensive, too much of a risk. But these are tracks that mankind's made on Mars. And people, uh, politicians though, don't seem to view this as being very efficient because the water atmosphere right, costs ten times what NASA's entire year budget is. However, I shouldn't indict the politicians because scientists themselves bear some of the blame. In the past, we had alchemists who, well, it wasn't quite science, but did really cool stuff. They discovered phosphorus and oxygen and hydrogen, and they depended the chemistry of uh, very much of the day. And you could argue that they only got the low-hanging fruit, but that's not entirely true. There are still great discoveries waiting to be made, but the way grants work and science is funded, it leads to us holding our data close to our hearts not sharing to other people, and doing slower science than otherwise would, so science is holding us to move at a glacial pace. There's a way to fix this, though. And, because I'm both a scientist and engineer, I, of course, know how to do it. <laughs> so, I'm here to tell you today that science can be fixed uh, by embracing the maker culture. The maker culture is one of Amanda Stocks' openness, sharing what we've done, sharing our data, sharing our results, our difficulties, publishing, and publishing everything. The magazine Maker Fair are great examples of it. So the first thing we can do is, well, hug a scientist. We're stressed out. We are trying to do chemistry on things we can't even see, and this is not easy. It's frustrating. Uh, I'm actually a refugee from biotech right now. Now I'm building robots. Go figure. But the second thing we do is learn more about science and see what other people have done. We have to do it requires this pointless. Go look at what other people have done first. You will learn so much more, so much more quickly about investing a whole lot in your gear. And the third thing is, open up the window on what you're doing so everyone can see it all the time. Otherwise, there's no point in you doing it. Um, the person hacking in the basement alone, I think is doomed to become something in the past. As hacker spaces and events like this force us out into the light and to get sunburned um, and share what we've done. In terms of science, though, there are organizations such as Public Library of Science that make everything open. Lots of uh, scientific journals in nature force you to pay for articles that your taxpayer, taxpayers are already funded. That's not so great. But public libraries are completely open. And it's not just that, but also hacker spaces are embracing biotech as well. Uh, this is a centrifuge. This isn't exactly when we have all hands active, but all hands active does have a bio lab coming up, and we're almost ready to start gene hacking. And the third thing, well, third, this is the fourth thing now, is being less formal about science. It's not a big scary thing. Computers used to be regarded as huge investments that were scary and expensive and way too arcane for us to use, and now we all have laptops that are magic boxes that work perfectly for us all the time, right? I mean, as long as we're on Linux. And we can't really know the reality that science is hard, because it is. But that's what makes sharing all the more important. If we share our data and our frustrations and what we're dealing with, then science becomes less hard for all of us. I don't remember why I put the slide here. I think it's to be curious. Uh, but uh, also be curious in what you're doing, and everything, the curiosity will lead you to be open and to see other people and come to events like this, because the curiosity is one of the things about humans. And the last thing, I'd like to thank the awesome people for already working this up, 
uh, Nima Gazay, he's in the audience, he can stand up. He's the force behind Long Tech and Mylar, and here's a round of applause. Great fair. Okay, great fair.